Well, I thought our defense was pretty solid uh, for the three quarters other than the second. Uh, we're not going to be perfect. Uh, we're going to make some mistakes. Uh, but that, that second quarter, we made so many mistakes. It was got to clean it up. Uh, second half was, I thought, was solid. They have some good players making big plays, and those are going to happen. But at the, the end once, um, we were not good last year. We started off the season pretty good. The last four games, not as good. We've given up four to five a game. That's, uh, that's too many. We talk about we got to make them make, make the two free throws instead of worrying about just making the one. Uh, but those are the things we, those are things that are correctable. Those are things that we can clean up and we have to, we're, we're in every game. Just like last night, tied, tied up with, you know, four minutes to go. We're in every game. We've got to figure out, you know, we gave up two and ones in the last four minutes. We gave up a, a late uh, baseline out of bounds with under four seconds, uh, three to him. And then we gave up another and one to Simmons on a mistake. So those are the things that we have to clean up and we will, we're right there in every game. And also just a quick follow-up. What did you see from Jerome Robinson? We've noticed like the last two games, he's been like your guy off the bench and you've talked about how he can help you on offense and has played well on defense. What was your assessment of him last night? Last night, not as good as the first, uh, the first two, uh, I mean, the last two games prior to that, um, for some reason, he was a little banged up going into the game, but he felt pretty good. Uh, I thought he gave um, uh, Milton too much room and too much space and too much of a comfort level. And, and we have to do a better job of making, making these guys um, fill us and, and put the pressure on them, dictate how we want to play. And I thought, I thought that group in that second quarter started it off. Uh, in those first two minutes, I thought they had uh, whatever ten points all off of mistakes and not being physical enough. But he he definitely can play. Could have played better. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Zach. Hey, Coach. Um, you mentioned Rui not playing well last night, and you sat him for the fourth quarter. What did you feel needed to be corrected? Well, I, I thought I, I think Rui, like we talked about today, even even. Russell even mentioned it. He's the only guy on our team can guard one through five. I mean, he can, if his mind and he's locked in and, and obviously he's going to continue to grow and get better and more experiences, but that says a lot. I mean, your best player is telling the guy that he can guard one through five and nobody else on our team can. Uh, I don't think he, I don't think he had that mindset going into the game. I thought, wasn't just him, but it was a lot of our guys. They just felt comfortable. We played against the best team in basketball, and and they're a great defensive team. And we still scored a bunch of points on them. But we gotta we gotta make sure that I'm not saying we we can be a top five defensive team, but we could be much better than what we're doing. Um, but it's the experience or the inexperience of the some guys. That's that's real. But um, having the the appropriate mindset going into the game. That has nothing to do with experience. I don't think Rui had that last game. That's very, very rare that, that that's the case. I'm sure like a lot of our guys, he's going to bounce back tomorrow night. Fred. Hey, Scott. Uh, we've asked you so much about the 10th man, and you've said it's fluid. Uh, in the second half yesterday, you kind of just went with a nine-man rotation. Is that something that we could see going forward as well? Yeah, I mean, it's basically a, the league is, you know, that 10th man around the league, and not only just us, it's anywhere from six to 12 minutes. Um, we have, um, we got some opportunities and we're, we've been checking it out throughout the, throughout the beginning of the year. And we're also analyzing and, and watching the guys compete for those minutes during practice. It's not the game minutes. Uh, but we have to find somebody that can step in and, and, and contribute and be consistent with those six to 12 minutes, uh, any given, any given game. Um, but we also have the opportunity to, to play nine, you know, play maybe more Denny, uh, play a little more Hau because it seems like, although he, they, uh, Hau does a lot of good things for us and he's earned a lot of those opportunities to play. Um, but it's open. We just gotta we gotta keep uh, exploring and experimenting and 
and try to find somebody there. Everybody has to be ready. Troy hasn't played the last couple, um, but he still has to he has to be ready and be ready to play maybe the next game. And and Scott, with a back to back coming up, uh, the with the resting plan that you guys have done with Russell is he sat on. You all always plan on doing it, or are there scenarios where you could see him if he were going to rest one of two games where he would? Uh, you're cutting in and out there. Are you oh. just asking? No, I was. What we're gonna do? I was asking the the first two back to backs you guys have. Is my internet okay now? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, so the first the first two back to backs that Russell has sat for half of, he's sat the second game of them. What's that process like? Deciding that he's going to sit the second instead of the first, and is that something that's going to be the case for all of them? No, I mean, not he's there's not um, really anything set in stone. It's a uh, we're like we, we talked about I think last three or four maybe a week ago. Uh, everybody's involved. Obviously, Russell has the biggest piece. He knows his body and, and knows. Um, uh, better than anyone. So uh, it's not confirmed. It's not, we haven't, we don't have this you know, master schedule and says, okay, he's going to play. And then we also, you know, there's a chance that he could play back to backs, um, which would be the case now. Uh, we don't know. We're going to see how he feels tomorrow with his dislocated finger, but uh, that's, don't know if he's going to play tomorrow. Don't know if he's going to play Miami. Don't know if he's going to play both. Uh, I'm assuming there's a, there's a possibility that. Anything's on the board. We just, it's always uh, predicated on the player's health. And we obviously will have some conversations with him um, tomorrow um, for a breakfast meeting. Ava. Hey, Scott. Um, Ish had one of his more impactful quarters last night in the fourth quarter, but games kind of overall. What did you see was working out well for him, either the guys he was playing with or things he was doing individually? Yeah, I thought he was, I just thought he was better. You know, he's, I thought even the last couple of games, he got less minutes, but I thought he was pretty good on, on both of those. And then tomorrow, or last night, uh, that unit came back and uh, they deserved to uh, try to finish it off. Um, our second, our second unit uh, has been good in the past and it's going to continue to uh, be good. It hasn't, hasn't been as good as I anticipated that it would be. Um, just for a variety of reasons, not his fault, but a lot of times you just have to tweak some things up and adjust some of the minutes and adjust some of the rotations to make it work. And, and we kind of did that where he gets, you know, the last six minutes of, of um, first and the third quarter. And Russ was going to get the bulk of those minutes and then how was going to get some of the other minutes. So um, I thought he played good. I thought he got it to the paint. We were really good when we were in the paint. We have to get to the paint, not necessarily for yourself, but if we can get shots out of the paint uh, with kick out threes and opportunity to get to the free throw line, and he's a big part of us doing that. All right, last question from Chris Miller. Scott, you made it clear before the season even started that the guys that were given minutes last year, that wasn't going to be the case this year. But is there a sense of frustration that some of the people that were given those minutes last year are now getting DNPs? Like, how are you, listen, you're going to reward people that are doing what you're asking them to do, right? But th th there has to be some sense of a disconnect between those guys playing a year ago to not playing now. What's been the, the difference in your opinion? Well, one, uh... I care about all of our players, and I understand that I've been in that position before. Everybody wants to play. Uh, this league is not about it. Everybody gets to play league. Uh, we were in a different position last year. Uh, you know, we got we got a position that guys. It's been fluid with Jerome, with with, with Troy, with uh, Isak, with Halu. Those are good players, but you can't play them all. Uh, we're committed to DB for the right reasons, what he brings. And Denny, Denny is, Denny has won that position. It's not, we, we did not give him anything. And is he going to have growing pains? Is it going to be a learning curve? Is he going to play 30 minutes every night? No, he only played, a, you know, 15 or 16 last night. But he's, he fought every day in practice, every day, today, watching the, the group four and four. Uh, you feel them and you see that urgency in them, and that's what we need. But the other guys have to be ready. 
I know the frustration's there and they should be. And if they're not, I don't think we would want them on our team. And I've, some guys I've talked to, some guys I've not talked to, just to give them some time. And But I'm gonna definitely have conversations with all. Uh, but it's definitely tough, um, but they should be, they should be frustrated. But if they're frustrated for the right reasons, because our record's two and six, I, I'd rather have that frustration than, you know, them being frustrated because they're not getting an extra, you know, minutes or shots. But that's not the case. I'm, but I'm sure, I'm sure they, they all want to play, which is very, very um, uh, normal. You talked about the and ones, and it's something that's been kind of clear Obviously, in the first Philly game, under five, they got a lot of and ones. They got a lot of and ones last night. You played in an era where there wouldn't be a lot of and ones. You would put them on their behind. Is Do you think the – I'm not going to say soft, but do you think the league is too friendly now, or are they afraid that if they foul too hard, there could be a flagrant one or two? Well, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, you look at all those, all those old series and all those playoff games and the clothes lines uh, from all the Philadelphia, the Sixers, their rivalry, the Lakers, Celtics, their rivalry, and they were just getting common fouls and maybe $50 fines. Uh, it's just different. It's definitely different. When I played, it was you, you didn't give up layups. You didn't give up free drives to the paint. You didn't give up cuts to the paint. And if you did, you, you're not, you're not, you weren't really going to probably fight with your opponent. But the next day in practice, you had a, probably a, a verbal or a physical uh, altercation with your teammates because they didn't like that. And they, it was unacceptable. But it, it's definitely, it's, it's, quite frankly, Chris, it's actually better. It was, it was getting to a verge of it was, you might, we might as well be one of the, uh, the NFL teams because the basketball back then it was getting too physical and it was it was with the athletes now it would have been extremely dangerous but with that being said we can't give up 20 I think we give up 20 of them in the last uh, four games I think we gave up five or six in the first four games so that's those are those are free points and we can't we can't do that and we talk about that and we we thought we corrected it but it, we reverted back to it but Hopefully tomorrow night uh, you won't see any, and we need to get on a, a nice string of the games that we we foul hard within the rules. We don't want to get a flag. We don't want to definitely don't want to hurt anybody. Everybody's in this for, the, for their livelihood, but we want to be physical. We and being physical is not being dirty. Being physical is being tough, um, touching them up. Don't let them have free cuts. Don't let them. Don't let them gain any real estate for you know not working for it and those are things that we have to improve on our experiences um as this season goes on and as all the guys career goes on we will understand that how important that is because when you when a team plays freely it's hard to stop there's so many dynamic offensive players and when they play freely it's hard to stop when they when they can fill us and we've had great stretches we just haven't had a consistent, you know, 48 minutes of that, but we, we have to, but we're right. Like I told the guys today, we're right there. We're right there. We got to, we got to keep playing. We got to keep plugging away. We got to keep finding ways to improve. And today was another good day. We got on the court, which we haven't been able to do that with our crazy schedule to start this season. I'm sure y'all thinking like about time. Uh, nah, just a feel, uh, just trying to be creative. Um, Sometimes you just let your anointing kind of take over and your ability and you're just kind of in the flow and in the flow of the game. And I felt Ben was on my hip. And uh, a lot of times, a lot of people in the league know when I get baseline, you know, I'm looking for shooters. Um, and so at that specific moment, everybody stayed out. Ben you know, kind of overplayed it. I spin back and uh, kind of felt where he was at and just spin it back. Uh, so it was just a feel, just like everything out there on the floor, it's just a feel. You're just trying to get a feel and a rhythm and a flow. And, uh, you know, I was blessed to make a nice move, a nice play, and tie the game up. Um, but that was a heck of a game. Uh, we battled, we scrapped, uh, but there's still so many other things we can get better at to take that next step. And secondly, uh, defensively, it seems like you guys have shown potential to be better. Some of the numbers look similar to last year, but I'm just wondering, you know, what signs are you encouraged by that you guys can build off of? When we down 21, came back, um, and with an exception of kind of the second quarter, I thought we did a great job defensively. Um, you know, uh, 
So just, you know, we scrapped in that fourth quarter and got back in the game in the third and fourth quarter, uh, made some plays, uh, rebounded the ball and, and pushed it. Uh, we get more opportunities where we can get stop and, stops and runs. So uh, I think those are positive uh, things to kind of outlook to look, look, look upon. Chris Miller. Hey, Ish, it seems to be a, a recurring thing for you guys under five in games, giving up a lot of and ones. You've been in this league for over a decade now, so you've kind of seen how the league has gone more offensive. Yeah. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about just kind of the mindset of just not giving up and ones in closeout situations? Yeah, I gave up one yesterday on Ben. I actually, uh, he, when I look back at the play, um, not a dirty play. I should have just kind of grabbed his arm so it wouldn't allow him to get the ball up to the rim because we know how athletic and how strong and how big he is. Uh, so once he got it above his head, um, you know, I was going to have to, like, really, really block it. And, and, and as strong as he is, that, that wasn't the case. Uh, so that was one thing. But it's just hard fouls or clean fouls uh, where you're not allowing the guy to get the ball up. Um, to get the opportunity to get an and one. Um, and, and like I said, it's just clean fouls, uh, good fouls to where um, the opportunity of an and one isn't there. Ava. Ish, what was working well for you last night in the in the fourth quarter, especially Scott Brooks? You know, we said it was one of the more impactful um, kind of quarters and certainly games that we've seen from you in a while. Yeah, no, like I said, Ava, it's about time. Uh, I think you guys know, uh, watch me play last year and been in this league for a minute. You know, that's just kind of what I do. Just come in and push the tempo, push the pace, uh, find shooters and, and score the basketball. I haven't been doing that this year. So I, I have to kind of, uh, get into a flow, get in the rhythm. Uh, I don't make excuses. I haven't been playing as well as I, um, that I'm capable of or what y'all, you know, what our fans and, and what you all are kind of used to. And so last night, um, you know, was, was a good indicator, um, was better. Um, I thought Minnesota was good. And I thought the um, other night against Brooklyn was good. So you just got to keep building on it. Uh, we got a lot of movable pieces, a lot of talented guys. Um, but you, you got to, you know, for myself, I look in the mirror and uh, I had to be better. And uh, last night was a little bit better. Yeah, kind of on that, what is the process like for you this season? Scott said today you guys actually got a chance to get on the court, unlike, you know, a lot of the other practices. But for you, someone who's coming into games off the bench and doesn't have the normal practice session to get in a rhythm, how are you, I guess, staying ready? No, it's, it's funny you say that, Avery, because, like, we've had days where we don't practice, and I'd be like, no, I'm practicing. Because I know for me, everything is a rhythm. It sounds crazy, but it's like, to me, like basketball is kind of like dancing. And some of y'all who can dance, y'all know what I mean. Some of y'all who can't, I really don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, it's like it's like a rhythm, it's like a dance step. And, and, and so when you get out there, you want to be in the right rhythm, you want to be on the right cadence, on the right dance steps, and, and you got to put in that practice, three on three, four on fours. And so uh, I do, you know, attribute that to kind of getting a better rhythm. Uh, you know, I set out a little bit um in training camp and and just different things it, it it shortened training camp and all those different things so uh, for me it's just trying to find that rhythm and any time and opportunity coach says we're gonna play three on three or four on four and and some of the guys he wants to sit out i'm like i ain't sitting out i'm playing i don't care if this year 18 I, i'm gonna play because i know for me it's pushing through a situation and getting into a rhythm so when it comes game time uh, you've done those dance steps and practice, and now it feels comfortable. Quentin. What's up, Ish? What's up, Key? Uh, I just wanted to kind of get your pulse on the overall morale of the team. I mean, I remember coming into this camp, especially not just media and fans, but even you guys were just really high on, you know, this year feels different than last. And to start off two and six, especially after a loss like you all had last night with such huge performances, but not only Brad, but all of you guys, uh, what's the morale in that locker room? It's actually upbeat. It's crazy because you think about it, Q, every game we gave up a couple leads. Um, 
and it's it, you gotta understand we're figuring stuff out and so it's not just you're plugging a piece in putting it in no these are dynamic pieces the rust to trade and and different guys that you, you know robin and and different guys that you're plugging in they're they're dynamic pieces and so you you got to get a rhythm with each other uh how you want to play and, and different things like that so it's actually really upbeat um it's not like we're getting blitzed we're in every game in the last five minutes and so it's just cleaning up those fine-tuned things but guys are really upbeat uh, you know me i'll get too high too low so i'm okay right. I, I get more mad at myself than anybody so uh but uh, we're actually really, really upbeat. It's crazy that you, you that you say that because uh, it's, it's no kind of feeling down or feeling bad about where we're at. And you mentioned the fourth quarter collapses, but you guys are in every single game, especially in the fourth. What do you think goes into really finishing those games on the winning side? Yeah, just I think first and foremost is getting a connection with everybody and, and knowing – um, where we want the ball at offensively, um, time and score, uh, and then defensively getting stops, knowing what the other team wants to run and who they want to get the ball to. Um, and like I said, just finding that connection together, uh, that connectivity of uh, where everybody should be on the court, on the offensive end and defensively, uh, where we want to force the ball and where we want to help and, and rebound and run. Um, you know, when we look at a team like Philly last, last night, they've added Seth and they've added Danny Green, but for the most part, their team, you know, Dwight and some other guys, but for the most part, their team was intact, their core pieces. Um, right. We've added some new core pieces in Russ, and, and uh, that dynamic with him and Brad has been special thus far, uh, but they're continuing to learn to, to play with each other, and, and like I said, our second unit is starting to continue to learn and, and grow with each other. Uh, so it's a lot. It's a lot of pieces. And uh, we're eight games in, so we got a long, long hole to go.